find a ball. My life is more than money and jewelry. Money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the baller. I went from playing sports to exotic whips. Yeah. Ain't gotta tell me, dog. I know I'm the shit behind the baller. My life is more than money and jewelry. Money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the baller. I went from music exec to this podcast. Now I finally feel at home and left behind the baller. The ball. Yo, yo, welcome to another episode of the top 10 business podcast in the world and the number one free game podcast in the entire universe. Yes, that means for motherfuckers right now up in Mars and Saturn who are listening to BTB, we see you. All right. This is the behind the baller show where I don't talk about diamonds or chains. I talk about real life shit and how to get the upper hand in life. This is a Dust Brothers production. This is 100% professional podcasting. This show is mixed and recorded and mastered in 12K HD sound. I am your host, Ben Baller, not Ben Humble. You can call me Dogecoin Ben or call me the Korean Liam Neeson. But yo, to start off, please go to YouTube and watch my interview on No Chaser Podcast with Tim Delaghetto. Um, go to my tweets. I, I listed the link there. I retweeted it. You know what I'm saying? Or you can just Google Ben Baller, Tim Delaghetto, um, No Chaser Podcast, or you can listen to it everywhere that you listen to podcasts, Okay. On that episode, we discuss our past beef. Yes, me and Tim had some real lame beef, but then we squashed that shit. And uh, we discussed other things like parenthood, and, you know, he's a new dad, and marriage, and all other real shit, Asian hate, all that, you know, shit. So anyways, look, yo, Tim, I appreciate you for having me on. I will definitely get you on this show to talk that shit. Oh, man. Now, on today's show... We have a very special guest, TikTok business guru, Matt Gracia. Uh, he is blessing the Sure SM7Bs today. For those of you who don't know what that is, those are the motherfucking general standard microphones for podcasting. It's what Joe Rogan uses. It's what any professional uses. Drake uses them for fucking OVO sound, okay? Anyways, this guy, Matt Gracia, he is like, he has his own lane, on TikTok, right? He just kind of focuses on his little green screen, breaks down business, but he really focuses on business and how to make money and how much money popular people make, um, whether it be entertainers, TikTokers, YouTubers, all that shit. Um, he caught my attention because he did a video about me and how much money I made, and he was a little off, but it's all good. But since I have a new slight obsession with TikTok, not really. But, you know, I kind of, you know, making videos and shit. I thought, why not? Let's get this dude on the show. He's got an interesting perspective. And to be honest, he was my first in-person interview guest in over 13 months. All right. Also on today's show, the Derek Chauvin verdict. Um, 16-year-old Makia Bryant was shot and killed in Ohio. Lots of rage. Lots of bullshit going on. The media loves creating fucking bedlam in our society. Um, there's this new Hulu documentary that I'm obsessed with on Bigfoot. Yes, Bigfoot motherfucker. Remember a, a couple weeks ago during my camp session uh, during spring break, I said that the city I was in had a Bigfoot museum. Well, these motherfuckers are talking about Sasquatch is real. Sasquatch, Sasquatch, motherfucking Bigfoot is real. And I'm like, shit, you know, because I was standing that motherfucker. Listen, you know we are going to talk about cryptocurrency and the swings and dips and everyone is panicking. And, you know, look, you motherfuckers need to be more cool like the fonts, okay? And my NFT drop with Diamond Supply Co., uh, I want to talk about investing in stocks and crypto and where and how I actually invest my money, which, look, might not be right for you right? It might not be the thing for you. What works for me might not work for you. Remember, I am not a motherfucking financial advisor. So don't sit here and blame me for some shit. And I don't have to cop out. I'm telling you what I'm doing with my money. So if I could risk my money, you know, some motherfuckers might be like, fuck it, but that's on y'all. Um, 
I got back on the golf course for the first time in 20 years, and now I'm paying for it in a big way. I am sore than a bitch, okay? The youth today are built different in so many ways, but some of these guys in the tech world are definitely powerful, and we will discuss a lot more on a brand new high doge finishing episode of BTB. BTB Army, are you ready? Okay. Well, then let's motherfucking go. So, of course, we're going to talk about Dogecoin. All right, you fucks. Look, what you thought. Like, listen, okay? You pussy ass, bitch, scary motherfuckers. I told you scared money don't make no money, okay? Do not throw rocks and then hide your hands, okay? You may not see the correlation, and if you don't, then fucking log off this podcast right now. I don't need that soft shit in here, okay? Anytime a major sale happens and you see motherfuckers offering the stocks, we see it. If you know how to look for it, you can. It's public information. And if someone wants to get off, you know, and, you know, sell their stocks, let them, right? So many people have sold their Doge coins at six cents. Even my cousin was telling me he did. Then so many sold at 25 cents. Look, we've had doubters, skeptics, all kinds of shit. We are holding strong at 30 cents, right? As of the recording of this show, we're right at just below 28.8 cents. But look, I'm not selling my shit, right? I truly believe Dogecoin will hit $1, okay? And by the way, Elon or Elon hasn't even come close to launching a little Dogecoin in a rocket or space shuttle where the fuck is going to the moon. Listen, he's putting a little Dogecoin in the fucking uh, space shuttle and it's going to the moon, but that's going to be probably at least six, no, four to six months before that happens, Okay. So fucking chill. You know what? If you can't afford to buy and hold cryptocurrency or stocks, then guess what? Don't. All right? Don't tell me what to do. No, I'm fucking telling you what to do because you're doing it the wrong way and you fuck it up for everyone else. Okay? Go tra- day trade penny stocks. Stay the fuck out of the big boy game. Okay? If you're not built for the swings and the roller coasters, then get your punk ass out the fucking way. All right? And never quit your day job ever. Understand that. Unless you got eight figures, you know, to buy you some oxygen and, and, you know, buy you a little future and where you could do some, you know, real safe shit, right? I'm not into safe shit like that. Okay, look, PSA number one, I am not a financial advisor. What works for me might not work for you. I take L's here and there, but in the last 13 months, I did not take any major L's And I was not lucky, okay? We talk about the past, like 10 years or so, I'm still batting, you know, 70% with crypto, even though I did have 2,000 Dogecoins at one point. You know what? Fuck it. It is what it is, okay? When Bitcoin hit $25,000 in December, guess what? I didn't sell. When it hit $50,000 around my birthday, I didn't sell. When it hit $63,000, okay? Last month, I finally got rid of half my coins. You want to know why? Because I needed to feel like the money was real, okay? And we're talking about a different amount. It didn't affect me. There's billionaires with billions of dollars in Bitcoin, okay? I had to see what $21 million felt like touching my bank account and transferring over because it took days, okay? I want to be like, okay, look, let me get this reality check, all right? I need that digital cryptocurrency to get into my actual bank account. And it went into my trust, right? My living trust. Now, it's time to move it on to some commercial real estate. And um, that's what my dude Suleiman does. Now, PSA number two. By the way, shout out to Travis Wilson, my banker who's fucking off the chain. He's also my loan guy and everything for everything. Look, PSA number two. I don't put any money out there that I can't lose, okay? Meaning, 
Once I put money into stocks or crypto, I've considered it gone already. I know it sounds silly to you guys, right? But it's like, that's how you got to play. If I lose, yo, I might be a little bummed, but not upset really, okay? But I've pretty much given it away, right? And basically, that's how I look at it. I'm like, yo, man, here you go. Put you out there, you know, and I put it out in the universe, right? Let's see. And I'm waiting to see what the universe puts back in my lap, okay? So remember this, okay? Raise your standards and the universe will meet you there. All you microwave era traders who want to jump in and dip out after making a few bucks or leave when you see a dip, y'all are truly the fucking worst, all right? Run and hide type cats. Now look, one thing I noticed about this new Gen Z era is you guys like to shoot guns instead of shoot the fair one, all right? You guys love to do drugs and then get emo and cry and shit and not understand why your emotions and body are acting a certain way. Well, listen, dunce, okay? Once you fuck with your serotonin levels because you're taking opiates, you're taking uppers and you're coming down, look, man, that shit, like if you don't understand like what 5-HTP is, then don't do fucking uppers and downers and drugs and shit like that, okay? You'll be in for a fucking very... Serious emotional breakdown, a crisis, right? And as you get older, understand that you lose these things called endorphins, which means you're going to feel pain in certain areas a lot more often than you did when you were a little kid. Even though you guys are young, you guys are being stupid. Look at just fucking relax and respect your elders and be gentle with the earth. And most importantly, hold the fuck on to your coins. Okay, hodl, doge gang, doge army. You guys have created miracles. Pat yourselves on the back right now. We have done what no other coin has done, all right? What once started out as a joke is on every single major business trade and news channel as of this last week, okay? It is not that far-fetched, and it's going to happen. We will jump on Coinbase and all the other major fucking places, okay? We're respected now, okay? Less than two weeks ago, we were in single digits, and now the bottom seems to be right around the mid to twi- high 20s, okay? So just relax, Right. I'm waiting for it to hit 25 cents. I was waiting last night. And you know what? Then as soon as it hits 25 cents or lower, I'm going to buy a lot more and just sit on it. Okay. Now, for all you guys who have been bombarding me with altcoin fucking, you know, um, tips and fucking this dollar sign ass coin, like, fuck out of here. You know, even if it's doing shit, great. Okay. And of course, the thousands of you who have asked me about Safe Moon. All right. Look. I'm not going to just, you know, throw Safe Moon under the bus. It is what it is. You know, I'm still trying to figure it out. Met some people who do marketing for it. Look, when you see all these TikTokers and all these high influential people who are not putting their own money in these coins, you know what I mean? They're, they're being gifted for marketing and stuff. Like I said, crypto is all about hype, okay? Yes, I'm sitting on a lot of Safe Moon right now. I'm still kind of wary of it, and I need to be because there's some weird shit that's going on with Safe Moon. It's very difficult to get, and right now there is high skepticism on Safe Moon in the crypto community. Okay, there are some guys who came out yesterday, I guess, on their Twitch and explained stuff. But look, this one for sure is a coin that if you are not a thousand percent headstrong, I highly suggest you do not invest in Safe Moon. Okay. It is also not very easy to get, and the rumors around crypto is so wild, the word spreads like wildfire, okay? I've heard, oh man, it's a Ponzi scheme, you know, you got to buy 10%, uh, when you buy it, you got to give 10%, and then when you sell it, you got to give 10%, and like, look, if that's true, yeah, that shit ain't right, okay? But trying to buy it is like using the fucking map out of the movie, Goonies is all fucked up, okay? And look, nobody is saying that you can't sell your coins, all I'm saying is there is a book of etiquette. And just like with the marriage that hits rocky terrain, you need to hold on and work that shit out. Okay. Sometimes you could be in a toxic relationship for whatever reason, but it works out if you want it to. All right. For those of you who bought Doge at 33 cents or more and are asking me, hey, Ben, what's going on? Why is it tanking? 
Bro, first of all, that's not fucking tank. You bought in high, okay? I never told you motherfuckers to buy in 33 cents. Cool, whatever. Look, bro, I'm not the master of Doge or crypto. All crypto went down this week, right? Bitcoin crashed bad, dropped over $10,000, okay? I sold a lot of it, thank God, and I transferred it around to ETH, to a lot of more Doge, to BNB. Look, I heard from someone that Bitcoin might possibly tank down to the high 30s, which is really bad. But I have all the faith that it will eventually hit 100,000 someday. So for all the remaining 117 Bitcoins that I currently have, I will be holding to see how this all turns out. Because you know what? I made enough money already. I'm not a greedy fuck. I'm having fun right now with Doge. And like I said, this is the people's currency. That's why I'm pushing it. Nobody is fucking paying me. I'm getting paid myself off the coin in real time. So just relax, smoke something, and don't panic. All right? For those of you who missed out when it was under a penny or under five cents, all right, look at, fuck it. Now is the time to triple your money, okay? If you see it at a quarter, buy in, buy the dip. Or don't buy it. Yeah, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm telling you guys what the fuck I'm gonna do. And that's if you can afford to take that risk. Nothing is guaranteed. You understand that, all right? Even Elon said, it is not wise to spend your life savings into crypto. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, but I truly feel Doge will hit a dollar or at least very near, okay? And I'm willing to hold on to see. After that, I do think it's gonna tank, but guess what? Once it tanks, there is longevity in this. It might drop back down to a quarter after it's a dollar, and then guess what? It may take a couple more years and then it'll stabilize again at a dollar. There is long-term, but this is for everyone. This is everyone's coin, okay? What I've made off of Doge, I could never have made on IRAs, S&P, and definitely not any bank account interest, all right? You lose money just off the inflation having your fucking money in a bank account, all right? I hope you all understood what was just said now because right about now, it's time for us to jump into a quick Lakey Lake break, and then we're going to get into this interview with the TikTok genius, Matt Gracia. So yo, Miles, do me a favor, sir. Please hit me off with some of that LL real quick and we'll be right back. Yo, yo, man, live from New York, your boy, the Korean John Cusack. We are here with a very special guest, something that I've never really done before. So we got Matt Gracia. He is a TikTok genius, right? I just completely created that title up right now. But what he really is is a content creator. I came across his page when I jumped on TikTok. Everyone who listens to this show know knows how much I talk shit about TikTok. I'd never get an account, boom. And then that shit happened, and I had to get an account, and they verified me immediately. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my boy, Matt Gracia. What's up, Matt? Dude, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, man. It's all love, bro. So, man, look, dog, I don't know you at all whatsoever. I know we've chatted a little bit here and there, but, like, if I don't know you, maybe it's one of like, And that doesn't mean anything, because my fan base goes from 16 to 65, right? Who are you? How old are you? When did you get on TikTok and how did you figure out that this would be something you'd be good at? Yeah, um, so I'm 23 years old. I got on TikTok around a year ago, um, just started making business related videos. I like to say I cover all things money, try to keep it broad. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's literally only been a year and uh, we're here. It's crazy. So you started during the pandemic then? Yeah. So what were you doing before the pandemic then? So, um, so I'm 23 now. I went to college, um, studied finance, and while I was in college, I started a sock brand uh, called Cancer Sock Co. It's C A N S W E R because the idea is to help find the answer to cancer. I used it to like donate money towards cancer research. Good. And um, so, yeah. Then after college, I was pursuing that full time, 
I was studying influencer marketing a lot, which is sort of just how I gained my initial interest. Where'd you go to college? Manhattan College. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, is that a four year or is that a junior? Uh, four year. Okay. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, then after that, I was just studying influencer marketing a lot, heard about TikTok. And that was the first time I really like pursued my personal brand online for the first time. Right. And, um, yeah, so I just started making videos that I was interested in. They like immediately blew up. Um, at some point I was like, oh my God, maybe I can monetize this. And, uh, ever since it's just, just gone crazy. How long did it take for you to start gaining momentum? I want to say three weeks. Really? That's fast. It's TikTok. Yeah, I've only been on TikTok for about three weeks. TikTok now, so. is crazy. No, you'll see. Um, it's just out of any of the other platforms, it's the only one that you can gain organic traction like really, really easy. Like anybody can do it. Like the amount of followers you have doesn't matter. And so I, I sort of just like tried to find this like format that I was using for my videos. I found one that worked like literally three weeks in. I made a video about how much money Addison Ray makes, like explained how she monetized, how, how she how monetized. How fucking funny. I was platforms. about to ask you that right now. It's crazy. I just wrote that down. You that know. was my first viral video. And then after that, I basically used the exact same format. And I was like, okay. So I, how, 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 many, how many views did you get off that? Um, I want to say like four and a half million views. Okay. So before then I was getting like 50,000, 100,000, like, uh, just like some traction. And at that point I probably had like 2000 and then it went to 20,000 followers basically overnight. It's crazy, man. Cause I jumped on with like, and I had like 400 followers and I fucking posted a video and it got like 200,000 views. I'm like, how the fuck do I have 200,000 views with 2000 with fucking 500 followers? But yeah. then like I figured out, I was like, okay, they don't want to see this shit. Like I can post jewelry. They don't care about that. It has to be a certain format like you said and we i'm like you know what i'm still figuring it out same time like like i don't really it's not that deep though like if it don't work out cool i'm not really tripping uh do you know why i got on the tiktok or no no so i didn't know you could dm people i didn't know you made money off tiktok i didn't know anything some dude had my name at ben baller for like years and he was fucking messaging people like, not that whatever but he messages always chicks with gigantic asses like huge chicks and tell them that they're gonna model he had like this email address like ben baller diamond at gmail.com like boom and so they would dm me and I'm like, yo, I got to get my name back. I can't fucking have this fool. Like, so they took his name. I got verified within like 24 hours. And the people are like, hey, bro, no one just gets verified like that. Like you had a plug. I'm like, motherfucker, I didn't want to be on TikTok. So I was like, fucking make a video. Dude, I don't fucking dance on a video. I used to be a dance when I was a kid. So I did like a little fucking break dance, pop video, having fun. And you know, boom. So fast forward. I don't know how, and I have zero idea how I came across your video. I really don't have a single clue. I don't know if someone sent it to me or whatever the fuck it is, right? And before we get into this fucking TikTok financial shit with Addison Rae and everything else, I'm just curious, like, where did you get those figures from for the video you made of me? Like, it was just funny. Uh, well, I mean, it's mostly from the internet. Like, you can find anything on the internet nowadays. No, of course. I'm just, just, that it was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. what intrigued you to make the video? Well, because, I mean, you obviously are... I mean, you're somewhat of an icon yourself. Um, and so I, I just think that it was it would be something that people would be interested in. And I think also with you specifically, like people or not everybody really knows like all of the things that are going on with you, like all of your businesses and like right. off air, we just had a whole conversation about crypto and it's like, I mean, maybe now that you're posting about it a lot, people, people know that. Right. Um, but Maybe, you know, like you said, they uh, don't. A lot of the, lot, seven, you know. eight years ago when you were on Bitcoin, like nobody knew that. Yeah. And so I thought that there was like a lot there to like bring to light, you know? Right. No, for sure. You know, I mean, that there's a lot of my portfolio that people don't know about. I don't really talk about real estate and stuff like that, whatever. Right. But it's just like a, it's almost a given to me. Right. Um, so someone like Addison Ray, right? I still don't know who the fuck she is. All I know is that she's always trending on Twitter for getting hated on because she steals other people's dances or people saying, oh, she stole this from the black culture and blah, blah, whatever here and there. I don't, fuck her, I don't care. Like, I don't want to collab with her or nothing. I just don't know. But she is she the top earner on TikTok? Uh, she's one of them. I think number, number one is Charlie D'Amelio. All right, who's that? She's a 16-year-old girl from Norwalk, Connecticut. Oh, so she's close by. Norwalk, well, Connecticut's pretty close to here. Yeah, dude. I think she. I think she probably moved out to California by now. But okay, is she the one that handed I, last night on Triller? They had. I think that was her. I thought it was a guy's name because Charlie. 
but she was on Triller last night on the fight night thing. Did you see that? Or yeah, not? yeah, yeah. She was. It's so crazy to me that like because Triller's a direct competition to TikTok. So is that gonna fuck up her TikTok money now or? Nah, probably not. I think Triller's probably giving her a lot of money. <laughs> No, they definitely gave us a shitload of money. They're they're paying a lot of people right now, but it's that like, was. But just so you know, and um, you know, uh, this episode is obviously being recorded. You know, at a certain time, boom, and like on my episode that drops tomorrow, like I will spend a good amount of time that I shouldn't be telling you that could be the worst fucking event I've ever seen in my entire life. That was the biggest piece of shit event. Everything. I don't to, to not tell you how bad I slammed it and fucking bad. It was horrible, but. So this girl, Charlie D'Amelia? Yep. How much do you think she made off? Or how much does that you know of, because you're like fucking Wikipedia, TikTok shit. How much money did she make last year? Uh, you know, Forbes did an article. I want to say she made like $5 million last year, but it's going to be way, way more this year. Really? Well, because TikTok, TikTok's catching on more. Like, I mean, I'm even seeing, and I wasn't that early on the TikTok game. Like, I'm even seeing an increase in like how much I can charge for a post. Like, I think brands are just catching on more now. And and now, like, uh, I think in the beginning, the question was, well, is TikTok going to stick around? Like, is it another Vine? Um, where is TikTok going? And now I think TikTok has sort of solidified its place in this whole social media thing. And I don't think it's just going to go away like Vine. So now I think brands are really paying attention to it. And if they're not yet, they're going to be very soon because they really don't have a choice. Okay, so for her, she's 16, right? How old is Addison Ray? Do you know roughly? She's young too, uh, probably between 19 and 21. Okay, and she makes like around a couple million dollars a year as well? Or? Yeah. Okay, so do you have any idea, like just, just, I mean, from what you've seen or anything, just off your speculation, do you know if these girls are like well-versed in like finance? Like, do they think they have a good tax person? Do you think they have good people behind her? Or is it just their mom running it? Do you have any idea? Well, they're making a ton of money and they all have like, full teams now i can imagine that i think you'd be su- i think you'd be surprised bro you'd be surprised. i probably I, would be i have a really good team i would bet a lot of money they don't have the same team i know some people who do but people don't i just like for instance uh catch me outside girl bad baby or is it bad barbie is it bad ba- oh, no, no, no. daniel yeah. Brigo, whatever danielle bro the moment she turned 18 you saw what happened right no the moment she turned 18 the minute she turned 18 she created an only fans she made $1.4 million in the first six six hours. I did see that. I did yeah, see that. Yeah, so I mean, she really made it. She showed a screenshot to me. I was like, holy shit. There's some sick fucks out there that want to see your titties. It's disgusting. And um, what I'm saying is she didn't really... She has a team, but it's one thing for you to have a team. It's another thing for you to listen, actually. Do you get what I'm saying? Like some people don't mean like, hey, why are you... Control- why are you- no, you're... Just- Where's my money at? Why are you holding it? Why are you... Da-da-da-da? They don't get it, you know? So... Um, Let's say like a, a random person that had, how many followers does Addison Ray have, by the way, on TikTok? Um, that's a good question. I know Charlie's more than 100 million. She's like the most Oh, followed. so there are 100 million people. Like yeah. there's, okay. Well, I think it's only her right now. Okay, so the question, I don't know about, but I see Jason Derulo. He spends more time on that than he's ever spent on anything in his entire fucking career. Like this he's guy's making more like, money right now than he's ever made in his entire career. I'm sure. What do you think, if you were to guess, like what is he making oh, off of TikTok? Man. I mean, it's got to be... It's got to be tens of millions a year. Oh, so he's making more than fucking Addison Rae. No, though. no, 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 no. Well, now they're making... W- I mean, okay, put it this way, right? I know I know a few people around like the million to two million follower mark who are making between like 30 and 50,000 a month. Okay. So, I mean, that's the interesting thing to me now too, right? Is like, you can be a regular, like me, right? Like a, you can be a regular person and just make like a full living off of tiktok no, you for know sure for sure depending on what your expenses are yeah, yeah but what i'm asking is like okay for instance uh like jason drill do you have any idea how many followers he has um no but probably i mean tens of millions of followers so sure. he has like more than 25 million followers probably yeah okay. i think i want to say maybe like between like 30 and 50 maybe holy shit okay so i'm just i'm just blown the fuck away so what are the rates for tiktok like how because i saw you break it down with little nas x but how many, like, is it per million views? Is it per 100,000 views? Like, when is it, when do you start making money on TikTok? So they pay uh, per view, but it's, you have to have 10,000 followers, I believe. I know that they changed some of the rules, but originally it was 10,000 followers and you had to have gotten more than 100,000 views in the last month to sign up for the creator fund, do they call it? Oh, they just sent me that thing. That's weird. 
I didn't even sign up for Did it. Did you just hit 10,000 followers? I have like 16,000 now or 17,000 or something, but yeah. they just sent me the thing. It's probably not even worth it. So what are the rates? So tell me. So it's, it's like three cents per thousand views. As okay. where YouTube, for like just in comparison, on average is like four dollars per thousand views what the fuck yeah youtube is four dollars per thousand views that's why i mean that's why uh you mentioned monetizing your youtube channel before like bro like my boy one of my clients i have a good friend of mine jay balvin who's huge he has a couple videos with a billion views on it so i had no fucking idea so he made fucking bank on those videos i'm sure yeah okay so tiktok is three cents four cents per thousand and YouTube is $4. Yeah. But at the same time, YouTube really depends, right? Like it fluctuates a lot. Um, for example, for someone in the financial space on YouTube, you could be making, I know somebody who's making $30 per thousand views. So you could like somebody, Why? because it de depending on the like industry they're in, those companies who are putting ads on the videos are willing to pay more oh, per impression. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah, because, you know, like little Ryan, the little um, yep, yep. Asian kid, my kids follow him, everything else. They don't watch anymore. He's too young for whatever. And, you know, he's getting into gaming. I mean, bro, he's done like 20 million, like two years in a row, three years in a row. He's crushing Easy. it. Easy. And, and good for him, right? And like, again, you realize like, okay, well, how does that make sense? You know, because think about it. They live still pretty chill. Like, you know, I've seen the upgrade in the house here and there, whatever, boom. But if you really have that kind of money, you don't understand how you could live with that. If you do it right, you know what I'm saying? If you're not thinking about a long future, I don't know. Um, all right, so the magic question. How much has Matt Gracia made off of fucking TikTok so far? <laughs> oh man, that's it. You know, this is like one of the, this is one of the biggest questions I get. Um, I mean, I will say we can go with like a range here. Um, not quite in the seven figures yet. Okay, so you haven't made a million dollars yet? No. Okay. But one of these days I will. Oh, you think so? Okay, so you're, yeah, on, yeah. you're on your way there. Yeah, but... Okay, um, so let's say... Let's say by, by Christmas, you break a million, right? You get a million dollars that you nice. by Christmas. Okay, it'd be nice. Okay, what's the first thing you're gonna buy yourself, or are you at all? Are you, are you gonna buy anything cool when you make a million, or or like? I'm gonna buy a three family home. I've been saying it for like three months now. Okay, why that number three? Uh, just a solid investment. I don't know. Two's not enough. Four might be too much money. Okay, and like what city? What area? Um, probably here in New York. And, but, well, but, like like outside of New York, Westchester right. County. That's oh, where Westchester I'm from. County. Okay, yeah. Westchester County. Okay, Is that that's five one six, right? Nine one four. So nine one four. I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. Westchester. Yeah, fucking. Well, actually, Yonkers is still nine one four too. Yep. Um, and uh, Mount Vernon. No, no, that's not okay. So yeah, it's nine one four too. It is nine one four, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, next question, brother. Are you invested in any stocks in crypto at the moment? Um, yeah, I love Tesla, and okay. I I like to keep it safe, so I have some in like S and P five hundred. I got Tesla too, and, and, and look, there's no such thing as real safe, but I get yeah. it. So, okay, you got money in Tesla, okay. Right. Well, I mean, so just over the course of making these TikTok videos, I've been learning a lot, right? Like there, I've discovered this whole community of like finance people on TikTok, and I've become friends with a lot of them. And uh, one of the most important things I've probably learned over the last year is if you're just letting your money sit in your bank account, then that money is just kind of just depreciating with inflation, right? So like you don't have to go and, and make the most risky investments if you're saving up for something like a house, for example, but like you want to at least fight inflation, right? right? Which I think is like at almost 3% a year. So um, a, something that a lot of people have recommended to me is just investing into something like the S&P 500, which like as long as you're not going to have to pull that money out and like six months from now, uh, you should be good. Like over the last, I think 60 years, it's gone up between like seven and 10%, like on average every year. Um, and so I think that, so that's something that I, I stand by a lot. And, uh, I guess I'll let you know when I try to retire when I'm 40. Right. And then what about like crypto? You have any money in crypto at all? I don't, I need to. So let me tell you something real quick, right? Everyone listen, everyone listen to this episode. This man is 23 years old, okay? At 23 years of age, he had said something that I didn't find out 
until I was 43, okay? Having money in the bank account is fucking stupid as shit. It is fucking pretty bad that it's there. Now, look, if you are a greedy son of a bitch and you want to keep going after that, look at fuck you, you know, whatever. But if you have over $10 million, look, at that point, you can play it as safe as you want because you should be able to be able to manage that and live off interest and live off certain things and do very, very minimal risk things and be okay. But for the most part, what he said was something I didn't know most of my adult life. I've just always worked and I've been good and here and there. He just said something very smart. As you guys know, 1.9 trillion has been pumped back into our fucking dollar, into the economy. They're going to put some more money. That means those $100 bills you see people flashing rap videos and shit, it's getting worse and worse. That dollar's getting worse. It's a fucking joke. So yes, definitely very smart for you to invest it in something else, even if it's a little risky, because just sitting in the fucking bank is literally, it is depreciating. That's crazy. He said that. Now, let me tell you something real quick. There are articles all over the internet from some of the best people, some of the most chill people. You look at the dude and the guy looks like he's a fucking professor, you know, like a 70 year old professor at fucking like, not even like the best school, just like a regular school. But these guys are very versed, they're very smart. Understand, if you don't get fluent in cryptocurrency and you're young, so this is more focused towards you than anybody else for the young generation, guys. If you don't get focused in cryptocurrency, you're pretty much going to have a tough century. Not tough three years, not tough five years. You're going to have a very difficult century because this is just the beginning of, I mean, you know, I don't know if you know this, but the treasury have just announced that we're doing digital money now. There's going to be a U.S. dollar that's digital. There's going to be, you know, a euro that's digital. So they already have the rights. It's all coming out and everything. And think about it. So paper money is going to be, it's just really getting to a crazy point in time now. You never think this is like could happen, but fuck, it really is, right? So they're trying to do all kinds of shit. At the end of the day, they're trying, because they want to, they could locate. People think that digital money is, you know, easier to um, hide, but no, it's not necessarily true. You know, like it's, you can hide a dollar underneath the fucking, you know, the, the, your backyard or where the fuck it may be. But it's just kind of crazy that all the stuff that's going on, even with like, look, people don't know why the fuck people need a real ID. Do you have a real ID yet? Yeah. Okay. A lot of people don't have real IDs yet because, you know, it's difficult to verify. And, you know, you start thinking about it. Okay, what's the purpose of this? They don't want immigrants to fucking fly. You know what I mean? You can't fly from LA to New York anymore without a passport. Okay, you don't have a passport? Have a real ID. Most of these people who don't have fucking papers, what are they going to do? can't fly anymore. You know, it's just getting, right. getting crazy. Right. Um, so going back to all that stuff and everything, I did see you talk about it a little bit on your, your TikTok. How do you feel about the whole wall street bets? You know, the Reddit shit and everything. Like, what do you think about that? Like those kids winning and, you know, like in kind of like the underdog, you know, kicking ass. I mean, it's cool. Like to me, anything, uh, that sort of goes against the grain is, is pretty cool. Um, and I think obviously like what a lot of the trading platforms did with, um, like stopping the trading of, uh, GameStop was like crazy. I think right. I was pretty much on the same side as everyone else. No, for sure. Yeah. But I mean, did you jump on a GameStop AMC I did. or you did? Yeah, but I didn't, I, I just got like a couple shares. It wasn't nothing Why? crazy. Why? Cause I, uh, fear <laughs> of missing out. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean is, why didn't you jump in more? You didn't. Well, right. Well, because I just, I didn't know. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Do you think, so you do think that Vlad was wrong? Founder um, of Art Robin Hood? I mean, yeah. Cocksucker, just, son of a bitch, motherfucker. <laughs> I just, I think, I mean, that's like adding 30 seconds on to the end of a football game, right? Like, it's like, well, yeah, you didn't get the outcome. It was worse than that, too. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> but it's like, you didn't get the outcome you wanted, so you changed the rules. That was like Trump saying he won the election, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, nah, bro, it's not happening. And now we're Republican, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just like, things happen. I guess we Do learn. you have a Robin Hood account? Uh, no, not, in, not anymore. Okay. Well, smart for you, man. I have, yeah. I have like a lot of money fucking tied up in fucking Robin Hood, fucking cocksucker. Um, Can you, you transfer it all? That's the fucked up part. I could only sell. That's another thing really? with Robin Hood sucks. Yes. And that's a big tax problem, right? It's fucked up. Yeah. So I can't like, you know, like, so did you happen to see the video I posted where I, and then people thought I was lying when I was saying Doge and the people were like, haters are coming at me. And then I posted the rebuttal videos to kill them. Is that the one where you posted your portfolio? Yeah. And they deleted it, right? Yeah, they deleted it. Why? Because I added the guy who came at me. He was like some 19 year old kid, whatever. I, so they I, deleted it for like harassment and bullying. It's it. I, I have the screenshot. I can show you too for harassment and bullying. So I posted 
And this is like my actual real bank thing right there, right? Yep. Do you see the numbers? Uh, how much money I have in, in stocks and things, right? Solid okay. numbers. So now, what does that say? Removed for harassment and bullying. Yeah. So. You know, that happens to me sometimes. And But I had to reply to dude. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. all right, dog, like, let me show you what time it is, bro. He's like, you could do that with anything. You could put Yahoo. Fun. Like, really? I could just put Yahoo. You fucking cocksucker. You know what I did too? I did this just to show people. I bought some shares yesterday. And you know what I did? You know when you screenshot something? I screenshot this, right? That's my friend Paul. We were on FaceTime doing it. So you see what time it was at, right? 2.14 p.m. It's actually yesterday with our boom. But then you see how many coins did I purchase? Say it out 200, loud. 200,000. 200,000 coins, okay? Look at the bottom here. Hold on. I'm going to put this down so Matt Garcia can see this. And people are like, yo, you're full of shit. You're capping, you know, blah, 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 whatever. I'm like, bro. You think I want to fucking lie about how much fucking money I fucking spend, dude? Look at that. That's how much money I spend. It dude. shows here. This month's spending, how much is that? This is not my business. This is personal Ben Yang, just my personal shit. How much have I spent this month? You want me to say it? Yes, yeah, say it. Fuck it. $54,490. Okay. How much did I spend in August? The bottom number above August 20. Does it say f- Four hundred one, four hundred one thousand dollars, yeah. right? So people are just like, yo, bro, like I don't have to, like people think, like I don't, I'm just curious. Look, I get it. Some people think I'm rich as fuck. People think I'm broke though, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Yeah, and, no, TikTok, and you know what's interesting about TikTok too is uh, the audience on there is much younger, right? Like a lot of people on there might not even really know you. Yeah, 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 it's true, but but, but it's good because it gives you an opportunity to sort of like hone in on the things that you want to be known for, right? But like, like some guy, his name was Little Uzi something. And I put Ella, I was like, bro, do me a favor, please. You idolize, Lil, just Google my name with Little Uzi. Oh my God. You actually know, I'm so, actually, that's like my little son, bro. It's like my boy. Like a lot, I do have a younger demographic than most people my age do. Cause I have a pretty wide fan base. It's cool. But speaking of that, what advice do you have for the younger generation of people who want to become content creators, influencers, or anything, because my son is heavily interested in this now in gaming and YouTube and everything. Like, what's something like? What's a gem? I'll coach your son through it. Right. What, but we'll besides give him a million that, followers by the end of the year. What, um, what, what's a gem you could you give the, the, the youth? Well, I think it's important to be making things that you're interested in, right? Like th- that's the first thing because. Like for me, for example, when I started, as soon as I saw a little bit of traction on TikTok and I saw like that little window of opportunity where I was like, okay, well maybe, maybe when people catch on to this, that opportunity might not be there anymore and it's going to get harder to grow on TikTok. I was making videos like three times a day, like on the weekends. I, like it's, I lived and breathed that for a year. Okay. How long did it take you to make the DoorDash video? Like realistic. Well, that one, yeah, no, that one took me a little while because I actually went out and door I know. Right? So what I'm saying like, is, how long yeah, did that take? Probably three, four hours. Uh, do you guys hear that, motherfuckers? Three, four hours to make a video. Some people talk, this, some chick did some out video change where she changed like the five different, so boom, walked out, opened the door, boom, walked out of the bullshit. She said that shit took her like 20 hours. I was like, bitch. I believe it. What the fuck? Like, you're tripping. Okay, so now look, what's the, the youngest you can be to, to get on your TikTok? I think it's 13, might be 15. Okay, so let's say you're 15. Um, I don't know, you like gaming, blah, 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 whatever. So like, what do you do? Like, you're like, hey, Matt, I need some help. Uh, when my son turns 15, he's like, hey, Matt, I want to start my TikTok account. How do I get some followers? Like, what do you tell him? I think it's super important to like, I don't want this to come off the wrong way. Uh, and oh, I don't God, want... here we go. The politically correct shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not politically correct. I just want to make sure that nobody takes this as like copy other people. But I think it's important to like look at what other people are doing, right? Like if you want to be in the video game space, which I'm not all that familiar with, look at what someone like Ninja is doing, right? Like he did it. He he laid out the blueprints. Um, so and the crazy at... thing is FaZe Clan did it before he did it. But go on. Okay, yeah, right. I get it. Um, but it's like, just look at people who are successful, look at what they did and then make it your own. You know, I had, um, before all this TikTok stuff, when I was just, when I was just like solely focused on the socks, I had graduated college. I got a job, uh, at a construction company doing like working in their finance and accounting department. I hated it. (laughs) It was horrible. And so, um, finally I... I was done with that by September after I graduated in May and I started interviewing with like 
uh, fashion companies because I figured, you know, at least maybe I could learn something for what I'm trying to do. So I met this 65-year-old Korean woman, Mrs. Jay Lee, the brightest woman I've ever met. Okay. Um, she is like an incredibly successful businesswoman. She owns the biggest women's sweater wholesaler in the world. And she, uh, I actually went, when I went on the interview with her, she was like, look, you, you seem really passionate about this whole sock thing. She's like, why don't you just do this? And, um, so she sort of convinced me into it and she's like, listen, you can come back every week. You can come back as often as you want. I'll help you through this. We'll like sort of revamp everything and, and try it again and see if it works. So, uh, that's what I started doing. And then eventually she convinced me to go into TikTok. But one of the things that she taught me, which I absolutely carried over to TikTok was like, you need to watch what everybody else is doing. Like if you're not looking at least at like who is succeeding, then I mean, it's just going to make your life so much harder. Right. Um, and so I think that like, that's something that's sort of been a subconscious thing for me. And so I think to anyone who's like trying to succeed in this, you have to do, you have to do what you're interested in. Cause if you're not interested in it, you're going to be putting a lot of hours into something that you're not interested in. And then it's gonna, just going to suck, you know? Yeah. Um, and then also just like, look at, like for me, for example, when I scroll through TikTok or something and I see a video that's doing really well, even if it has nothing to do with my niche, I sort of look at it from a different lens and I'm like, well, why did this do well? Like, what, what were the first three seconds like? Like, why did, why did this draw everybody's attention and the algorithm sort of just like pushed it right. out to a trillion people? Right. You know, what's funny is, guys, everyone listen to this uh, episode, BTB Army, two episodes ago, what did I say about gauging greatness at the end of, I think, episode 175, maybe? Do you guys recall what I said? This motherfucker, Matt, just damn near mimicked everything I said. I said, you need to look at what the best people are doing, study them. You don't need to copy them, but you need to find some sort of influence on how to change that around and regurgitate it into your own content. He just basically said the exact same shit. You know what? This little kid is going fucking places and... Um, Fuck you for everyone who is not understanding this right now, but it's just fucking hilarious. Um, so let me ask you this, man. Where do you see yourself in five years? I love that question. Um, you know, I think it, I think it really depends on. Uh, no, fuck you, man. No, like, don't, don't give me the depend shit. <laughs> All right, where do okay. you see yourself in five so years? So in five years from now, ideally, I would have like twenty-five million followers or so on TikTok. Hopefully <laughs> it'll be, well, because you got to think too, right? <laughs> you got to think, uh, my niche is very specific, right? right. So like someone like Charlie D'Amelio, she's got more than a hundred million followers. Um, everybody originally was on TikTok for that. Right. So if I get to 25 million, I'll be in a real good place. Right. Um, at that point, I don't know, just focused on real estate. I want to get into like talent management eventually. Um, I think that's super interesting, like just maybe creating a, a talent agency that's like by an actual, uh, influencer or creator or whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, then at that point, you know, you don't have to work, you got a piece of their content and boom, and right. you're getting a percentage. Yeah. But like, like, okay. So in five years you see that boom. Okay. And that's really at the end of the year, 28, you're still fucking pretty young. You fucked up. Okay. Boom. Where do you see yourself in 10 years then, where would you like to see yourself at 33? Um, I guess like, well, because those two things, right? Like a real estate, for example, never ending. You can, I mean, you're never going to buy all of New York City, right? So I guess like, obviously. But hey, listen, if you own commercial real estate right now, you're in a fucking tricky place because of rent, you know, all this other shit that's not fucking protected. Some people are, some people aren't. Some people have PPP, some people don't. Like, dude, I'm a business owner. You know, and I got fucking issues with land, you know, with, I have landlords as well too. So it's like a fucking double, it's fucked up situation. Now the housing market in a lot of places has gone up fucking crazy. It's ridiculous. It's insane. The rates have dropped from the banks so that people are buying. Like, dude, my house has gone up over a million dollars in the last year. It's just fucking crazy. But I'm saying, I'm saying, okay, 33 in your perfect world, where are you? Well, hopefully uh, in five years, I'll be pursuing some of these ideas. Uh, 
more than I am now. And hopefully by the time I'm 33, they'll be more successful. So like another thing that I want to do is like a media company, right? Um, I would love to start something like Forbes, except like cool. Right. Um, <laughs> like, Stop, dude. You said something really dope. Look, when I was growing up and I was 16, when I was 13, Forbes was the main thing because Malcolm Forbes was still alive at that point doing parties, everything, and it meant something. They would do the Forbes list and guess what? You couldn't be put on by submission. He had access to looking at people's things and feel like, all right, boom, here. There was drug dealers on the Forbes 500. Do you know what I mean? So he's like, oh, you know, blah, blah, whatever, this person put that. No, no, no. Now it's like, okay, well, there's this person, this person. No, no, you, you don't ask to be put on. They just put you on. It was like a weird thing. Like, you know, it's different times. You could say certain things now you couldn't say back in the day. You could sit there and be like, you know, hey, Matt, you have a nice little bulge in your pants, man. What do you got in your pants? All of a sudden, I'm sued for sexual harassment. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Right, like, right. It's a different time. They were able to get away with putting people on a list and be like, you know, like, hey, dude, what the fuck? I didn't ask for this. Most people who have money, they didn't care. You know, they're cool. But now it's like, like you said, it's really interesting. I've never heard that before. Forbes isn't cool. That 40, 30 under, oh, 30 under 30. Yeah, 30 under 30 under 30 and this and sports and this. And shut the fuck up, bro. What's the real 30 under 30? You know, like you should create something like that. Well, yeah, I, I also just really like the idea of like mini documentaries. Like, I don't know about you, but I find myself at like 2 a.m. in bed watching like vice documentaries, you know? Um, so funny. <laughs> and they're they're so well put together. And all the time I'm just like, Man, you know, I wish there were like vice documentaries, like not about like random things. Like if there was a vice style documentary about something that I'm interested in, which obviously like entrepreneurship would be one of those things. And like, for example, even like uh, I read a book a few months ago uh, called Shoe Dog. It's by Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. Yeah, I know. I know. I've, I've watched it. And he is like someone that's so inspiring to me. And I didn't know his story. And unfortunately like a lot of people don't which is crazy like a lot of people know his story but it's not like everybody knows phil knight and everybody knows all the things he went through um creating nike and so i was just thinking like there are so many entrepreneurs whose stories aren't told right. i think i've told a lot of my story a lot of people haven't heard it that's all you know even though let's say for instance one million people have there's fucking 300 billion that have you know what i'm saying um i met phil you know i work for nike so you know all that stuff it's cool Okay, so what is the finish line for you then? When do you, why do you retire at 40 and what defines retirement for you? Well, I don't think I'll actually retire at 40. I, I, that was just a joke before. But I think ideally just owning your time is so important, right? Oh, like man. just being able to do whatever you want. Amen. Yeah. So you know, it's like- I Tell people, look, man, you know what the biggest luxury in the world is? Not having a phone, bro. Yeah. Like my dream- my fucking dream of dreams, delete every one of my social media platforms, all that shit. Like I didn't have internet. I was account camping for three, four days. We had no, we didn't have internet. We didn't have, I didn't have a bar of phone service. And you think usually, oh, what if something happens? But I have my son, my two sons, my daughter, my, my wife, you know, my family with me. Everyone's here. Like we have everything we need at that point for whatever. God forbid something happens. Yes, I will jump in the car, boom, and take off. But we have everything. We have water, electricity, we have, you know, we, I have a fucking beautiful luxury RV rig, you know, we're good. It was just, they were going crazy. And my wife's like, I can't be, you're not going crazy. I'm like, no, fuck this. I needed this reset. No, it's great. Like we have, uh, my grandparents are from a really, really small town in Italy. Like right. the population there is 800 people. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like a high school. And, um, I mean, their everyday like essentials are much different than ours, but we, I mean, at least before the pandemic have been going there like every year and it's oh, such dope. a nice reset. Yeah. It's just like- Do you speak Italian? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Well, man, look, man, dude, this has been very informative. Maybe up there with my most informative things and something I'm interested in and I'm glad that we ended up doing this show. Um, one thing that I ask every single guest on the end of every single interview, every guest gets asked this is period is, is there anything you want to ask me? <sighs> Absolutely. God. <laughs> All right. I got like 10 questions, so I'll bring it down to the, maybe the most important one. Um, okay. So I, I remember reading that you said the only time I believe that you were starstruck was when you sold a piece to, I believe, Michael Jackson it and Prince. Prince, yeah. Do you see a difference or did you see a difference in their view in buying jewelry? I think I read it was like a, a belt buckle, right? 
Michael Jackson bought belt buckles and, and brooches. Got it. So do you see a difference in their mindset when buying stuff like that as opposed to like the newer generation? Like do, were either of them particularly financially conscious of like what it would be valued at in five years from now? Like, is this an investment? Are they just throwing the money away? Like it was different. Michael did some research, saw that I was a cool dude. His manager knew me, decided to give me a chance. Everything that he fucked with that he thought at one point, look, one, I own it. So now even if it's cool, it's going to be 10 times cooler, which technically is true because he's literally one in a trillion. He's that much of an icon. He's a different level. The word legend, the word celebrity, all those things are thrown around way too loosely. This dude is a different man, different animal walking around the streets. You know what I mean? Like totally different from, you know, definitely earlier than your time. But, you know, he was searching for a 47 karat blue diamond, certain things I couldn't get access to. But definitely for sure, everything that he bought from me definitely probably went up in value. He saw, he knew, he had people looking at it after, telling me, nah, we don't like this. I was like, God damn. I was like, man, this is a bitch. And only did I put up with the bullshit because of who it was. Now, let's say, for instance, someone like Lil Uzi or someone else, they don't really look at it so much now. Uzi's starting to, some other people, even at ASAP Ferg's, like, oh, I want, I want to get bigger times. I want to look at this, this, and this. Some people are looking at it from the investment aspect. Some other people are doing not. You're talking about somebody who has a real, actual, indisposable, you know, uh, a budget, doesn't give a fuck. And you have someone else who's kind of like, oh, yeah, I could get this. Okay, well, shit. Oh, well, you know, boom. MJ's not going to say no. He wasn't looking to no know the price, whatever. He never, never shied away different, you know, look like, Oh shit, really? No. These new generation guys, they don't get it. Like even the guys who really have a lot of money, boom, they have a rough idea of certain things. But I'm in a different space of where I'm making jewelry now. You know what I mean? I only make, you know, I'm only doing pieces for 20, 50 grand a minimum. You know, I take five clients on a year. I have other things here. I have stores, so the store does well. But you know, I'm I'm booked until April 2023. Well, now probably June 2023. And so, like, you know what you're getting. Like, for instance, Kid Cudi, he's bought a couple pieces from me. His pieces have already gone up in value now because they're tied to Murakami, you know, a very famous artist. Right. So, you know, it's a big difference, man. You can't compare that generation with this. And they're making money differently. Yes, now it could be easier, maybe faster, but there is different type of wealth. Because if you think about the money now, if you think about what Lionel Richie's house looked like back then and what he paid for it, you can't buy that house now for less than $100 million. These kids don't have $100 million to buy a house. Do you know what I mean? You have to do certain things. It's just a different time. And they're two totally polar opposites just because they're both the music or some of my clientele. Even the big, big, big clients who do make shitloads of money. Drake's a very rich dude. You know, Jay-Z's a rich guy. But it's, again, it's different. Now, Jay-Z was technically, yes, definitely, you know, wealthier than Michael. But when Jay buys something, he knows exactly what he's doing. Sometimes you're just buying your daughter a gift. You want to buy a nice little chain that says her name on it, boom, it is what it is. But then, you know, you're you're buying a watch that you paid, you know, 300 grand for, and now it's worth 1.6. You know, there's different things, you know. It really just depends on who it is. My average client now definitely is somebody, you, you cannot be fake rich or fast food money rich. And when I say fast food, I don't technically mean Burger King, Carl's Jr. I mean, like, you got your money the microwave way. Cooked it fast, boom, it's going to get cold fast. Um, you know, it's just a different type of thing. And I... I now have less headaches. You want to fucking call me? You want to text me? You want to bother me about some shit? You're going to have to pay a quarter million dollars to start it. Okay? Boom. And that's the minimum. So that's, you know, that's where it's at. Comes back to owning your time. There it is, bro. So, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I was, uh, we got to do it again, bro. Dude, thank you for having me. Yeah, let's definitely do it again. And by Anytime. the way, th thank you for the bottle of Azul. This, this man <laughs> brought me a very expensive bottle of tequila. Appreciate it. That's a classy and thing. And we got you some socks, too. Oh, and you got me some socks. You yeah. know I love socks. Uh, Miles, man, let's get into some lakey... Before we begin into the second part of the show, um, I'd like to say congrats to a loyal BTB listener and a supporter of my Tops Project 70 cards. Yo, I'd like to say congrats to Martin Guzman or maybe Martin Guzman out of North Carolina. I won't say what city he's in on winning 2,500 Doge coins for buying my Ichiro tribute card to my boy Rex Project 70 card. Listen. Hold on to those Dogecoins, fam. 
All right. Um, sorry to continue this stock and investment shit. I'm just thinking about listening to Matt's talk and how we talk about stuff. But look, okay, a lot of you guys don't understand how taxes work. And that's why so many people have Delaware or Montana Corps or they move to Nevada, Texas, or Florida. Okay. And if you're trying to save, then those are definitely moves you should consider making, right? If you have not incorporated yourself, I don't give a fuck what you do. All right. I highly suggest you incorporate yourself so you could fucking, you know, absorb some of these taxes, or whatever else. But also, listen, sometimes you want to pay a lot of taxes. People say, what the fuck are you talking about? You want to know why? So you could get approved for your dream house for that loan on a home. Yeah, you can work harder and keep going until you pay it off in cash, but that's not the fucking smartest thing to do, all right? Because now you have no cash to play around with unless you're going to take a loan on your house, okay? And if you're trying to buy a house today or at least in the last two years, yo, good luck, okay? Especially with the pandemic now and people doing fucking forbearances and stuff, your shit now, your credit, your taxes, everything got to be A, 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 1, Okay, they want to see your tax returns for the last two years. Make sure you motherfucking claiming shit and you're making money in there. If you ain't claiming enough on your taxes, they ain't going to give you no big house, motherfucker. All right, or house that you want. All right, they want to see bank statements for at least a year. They want to see fucking everything. Look, they want to see your dick. Okay, they even want to see your pussy, even if you don't got one. All right, what I'm trying to say is it's not a cakewalk anymore to all that fuckery and fraud. Banks ain't playing games no more, right? Even exotic cars right now, all the major banks, they're not loaning more than 250 grand. So you better get your shit taken care of, right? Now, if you're on the up and up and you got your taxes in order, then shit, right now is the best time to buy. You got rates that are incredible, but you know what? Motherfuckers are buying up real estate left and right right now. It's crazy. Is there a bubble? Who fucking knows, right? All I know is I own my crib and guess what? My shit then went up like $1.6 million in fucking two and a half years. That's fucking unheard of. Okay, especially when you're on an upper, you know, whatever, and somewhat a little bit of above the regular price ranges. Um, anyways, look, if you're out there hustling, you're in the cannabis game, whatever the fuck it may be, you know, you're in that black or sub gray area. Listen, figure out a way to become legit, which means you will need to give up some ass to get the right ass. All right, no joke. Find a legit hustle so that you can transfer your shit into real shit. And yes, you'll lose a little bit on the exchange, but that's okay because you want to live right. Don't live like a fucking degenerate, okay? Owning property is always a good idea. Just make sure you are getting a good rate, all right? If your shit's fucked up, you can find one of these banks, like, ah, fuck, you know, we got SafeMart Bank, we'll fucking invest in, we'll uh, give you a loan. No, fuck all that, Okay. I see so much business and life advice on social media that it's giving me fucking, I want to vomit, right? I see these IG business pages, but yet the guys who run these fucking pages, I've had discussions with them, they don't even fucking own a home. They don't even own a single Bitcoin, yet they want to fucking tell you how to live your life. Fuck those dudes, okay? Get the fuck out of here. Go to hell, don't ever give business advice to someone who's more successful than you, all right? Get in the fucking game before you lead someone down the wrong path, okay? I'm here literally handing out free game for zero dollars and zero cents, all right? Speaking of which, Apple Podcasts have just announced that they're launching a subscription-based platform, and who knows? BTB might be charging I don't know, three, four dollars, five dollars a month subscription for all this game. You know what? We shall see. You know, I know there might be a drop off here and there, but guess what? Your boy got to get, you know, compensated for what we got going on over here because I'm giving you motherfuckers a lot. And I spent a lot of time doing this and I'm very passionate about what I do. And I didn't hit these top charts for no reason. So look, show some love for your boy. You can't be that cheap of a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's four or five dollars each year. It's really not that bad. Um, now, real quick, about the Derek Chauvin trial, and I'm not going to talk about this very long. Like I've said previously, once I knew the jury was done deliberating like super fast like that, I was like, yo, I'm positive. This is going to be a fucking, it's curtains for dude. And he got, you know, he was guilty of all three charges, right? And um, now peep game. 
the sentencing is coming up and, you know, they don't know he's going to get 40 years, what the fuck it is. The def- they also denied his bail, which was awesome. The defense tried to throw in all this bullshit, like the exhaust fumes could have killed them, but yet you, you see all that, but there's no toxicology report of carbon dioxide. So what the fuck are you talking about? I'm talking about no, oh, this, shut the fuck up. He said, oh, Mr. Floyd had an insane amount of fentanyl inside his body in the, in the toxicology report and his, his autopsy and, uh, the coroner's office or some doctor got on trial and said, hey, had Mr. Floyd got home instead of being in this altercation, he would have died of an accidental overdose. We're sure of it. That's how much drugs he had in his system. Guess fucking what? That's like saying, hey, guess what? If someone who got shot at work, right? The person that got shot at work that works at the gas station, what if that person didn't show up to work that day? Well, I guess they'd be alive today, right? No shit done fucking yo that makes me so angry if Derek Shalvin and his punk ass cop homies did not hold George Floyd down when he's screaming calling for his mama all that shit and put his knee to fucking Mr. Floyd's neck for over nine minutes yo George would have been alive they would have threw his ass in there yo zip type the dude and fucking throw him in there throw the, 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 the there's shit that's all crazy right now look Let's say they didn't fucking step on his neck and all of this shit and they put him in the back of the car and he screamed about he's claustrophobic. Of course, he had a bunch of drugs in his body. But if they later, okay, if they put him in the back of the seat, rolled the windows down, drove with our boom, and he were to die in police custody without any abuse from the Minnesota police, then, yo, we would be in a whole different situation right now, okay? Yes, the timing would have sucked and people would have been mad and everything, right? Guess what? They would have been like, "Lo, he died of an overdose. He had died of a heart attack. You know, they'd be like, oh, fuck this, blah, blah, whatever. No, that would have been a whole different conversation, okay? But fuck boy, Chalvin, or Chalvin, and his knee were the weapon, or was the weapon used in that murder. And he's going to rot in jail. So that's all I got to say about that. I want to hear shit about he would have died at home, blah, blah. Too fucking bad. The knee went to his neck. It killed him. Okay, now on the same day as the verdict, a 16-year-old girl by the name of Makia Bryant was in the middle of an altercation with another girl. Supposedly, they both lived in a foster house or some other shit that's going on. Look, I don't know what's going on. Allegedly, she called the police for help against the girl. Now, mind you, when you watch the video and you watch the police video, the chick she's fighting in the pink dress or the pink suit, she don't look like she is intimidating. She looks like she's getting her ass beat, okay? And so there's side stories saying that Makia's family called the police, which makes a big difference. You sit there be calling the police. No one knows what the fuck whole backstory is. Why was she fighting the girl? Why does she look like the aggressor and the other girl? What the fuck did that girl do? Why does she have a knife out? Okay? Call the police out. There's still no evidence if, again, she had called or her for family had called. There's not a lot of evidence that's being released right now. I'm sure some shit's gonna start to surface, but when the police got there, one cop who was pretty new, less than two years on the job, he rushed to the scene and Makia was literally in the middle of a fucking fight with the girl in the pink outfit, the pink tracks, whatever, who happened to be black as well. And I don't know what the fuck they were fighting over, but just from the couple angles of video I watched, Makia looked like she was about to fucking stab this girl to death, okay? They caught a fucking camera shot. She had a knife in her right hand, and it was aiming for uh, this woman's neck, body, chest, whatever the fuck it was. She was within microseconds away from stabbing another young girl, okay? And that's when the cop told her to stop, and instead of using his taser gun, which it seemed like he couldn't use because it wouldn't have stopped her maybe, and she still would have been able to to stab someone who fucking knows, right? So he felt like the correct weapon to use was the gun. He fired off four shots. And, you know, the way the girls were moving, they're jumping around here and there. There was no sharpshooter, really, who could have just... This ain't the fucking movies with Jason Stratham and shit, right? He's a cop. He aimed for four shots for her. You know what I mean? Happened to hit her in the chest, whatever, boom. It wasn't like if he could have hit her in the legs, maybe he would have. Again, I don't know what this cop was thinking, okay? Just to drop her. And at the end of the day, from what it seemed like in the video, the police officer saved the other girl in the pink. She saved her life. Now, first things first, fuck the police. You guys already know. If you've been following me, you already know I don't rock with police. Okay, period. Now, what else could the cop have done? 
What if Makia was the aggressor? What if she wasn't? We are going to need a backstory and witnesses to tell us why her and the girl in the pink were in a fight for real. Why were they really in a fight? And why was she about to stab her? Okay. Overall, this is an unfortunate situation and my condolences go to the Bryant family, but there will be a lot revealed over the next few days or the next week because this shit is all fucked up and I'm not on either side. I'm just telling y'all what I saw over and over again. And now, yes, Kyle Rittenhouse and others, white people have had weapons in their hands and lived. But look, had that cop been called and told that one of these sick ass white boys, like, look, okay, let's just put that situation and let's put fucking Kyle Rittenhouse in the situation, not fucking in, you know, Kanoa, whatever the fuck they were in this exact area, Columbus, Ohio. Now, Kyle has a gun. He's pointing it at the chick in the pink sweatsuit and the cops call up. He says, drop the weapon now. Okay. And the cop sees him, right? It's not McKee anymore. It's Kyle Rittenhouse. Drop the weapon right now. And he had a kind of cack pocked back. Please believe, I believe the fucking police officer would have shot them the fuck up, okay? I think that he would have definitely dropped Kyle right there in that situation, all right? And I'm not defending the police. I'm just letting y'all know what the fuck it was. She had a fucking knife. Now, I've seen police kill white folks on police chases. I've seen them kill Middle Easterners, okay? I've seen them kill a fucking Asian dude who was driving. They told him to stop, and they shot up inside the car and killed him right on fucking live TV, Okay, so I want you guys' opinion. What do you think about this whole situation, right? One girl's life is saved, one girl's isn't, boom, whatever. Look, the media loves this shit. They like to rile people up. They like to rile the public up and make it something bigger, even if it is huge. You can make something bigger than huge, okay? It's fucked up, and yes, this is a catch-22. Yes, that cop could have not shot Makia, and then, you know, he was a rookie cop, right? Well, almost, whatever, but then what happens if he doesn't shoot Makia, right? What happens when Makia stabs old girl in the face or the heart or what? Then what? Exactly. So I want your guys' opinion because motherfuckers are quick to say this, that, and the third. And I'm just saying, it ain't that easy, man. This shit's fucked up, you know? And I've seen LeBron's tweets and everything else. And look, I'm not mad. And man, the Raiders tweet, man, some dude was saying some shit like, hey man, um, you know, George Floyd's family said I can finally breathe. No, motherfucker. He said that in context to him. The fuck is Mark Davis got to have to fucking do with that shit? Did you not see when the Eric Garner case happened and people are wearing I can't breathe shirts? The police officers, the corrupt fucking crooked cops were wearing I can breathe t-shirts mocking the situation. So do your fucking research before you think that the Raiders are trying to be on the fuck this poor fucking tweet. Anyways, real quick, the Lakers play the Mavericks tonight. By the way, if you don't know, the Dallas Mavericks accept Dogecoin for all their merch and I think more stuff. So make sure you check out the gift shop if you want to buy some stuff, right? Uh, anyways, for the Laker game, AD, Anthony Davis, is possibly making his comeback tonight if he feels good. So let's see what the baby goat does. Okay, now, this show called Sasquatch is available on Hulu, and it is a legit documentary about Bigfoot and some witnesses in the NorCal area, Mendocino, Humboldt County, all that up there, right by the Oregon border, where it's been known for decades and decades where people grow weed in these, you know, private farms and shit. And supposedly, a few people witnessed three cannabis growers, three drug dealers get mangled and mauled by Bigfoot, like thrown like a fucking rag doll. You know what I'm saying? Like all these crazy things. And I always thought this shit was a joke. But now this shit getting crazy, okay? Because I've camped in these parts. And this fucking show is fascinating, right? So definitely check it out. I don't want to give any spoilers out, um, but definitely, yeah, check out Sasquatch. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I, I can really recommend. Um, I missed the versus battle between Red Man and Method Man. I was fucking so caught up in Doge and other shit and trying to get my life back together. But I'm actually a little sad. I shouldn't have missed it. I know I talked to Reggie not that long ago. Um, Reggie Noble, aka Red Man. But, um, I mean, I haven't even fucking fully unpacked from New York City yet, right? But fun fact, I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast, right? Yeah, I have. Okay. Um, I used to be a Def Quad DJ. 
Death Squad was the crew, Eric Sermon, Red Band, Keith Murray, you know, um, Lil Jamal. Anyways, so I was Red Man and Keith Murray's tour DJ for almost like two years. I was their tour DJ. That's a big fucking honor. These are two lyricists, two very respected hip hop heads. I think about those times, Japan, all that shit, man. Shout out to my boy Tony De Niro. Shout out to my boy the Green Eye Bandit, aka Eric Sermon. Much love to my boy Reggie Noble. Um Flying home from NYC was a breeze, right? Of course, I had first class suite and everything, but I'm just saying, like, it was, they were really on it, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as cleaning the bathrooms and wiping shit down, I had my own wipes, of course, here and there, and the lay down bed was nice, watching movies, watching things on my iPad, but look, I can't wait to fly, like, to Paris, they're starting to let people in with the vaccine, I need to go to Europe, I want to go to Dubai, I want to get the fuck out of here, I'm ready to go to Hawaii, all this shit, now that we're vaccinated, but um, yesterday, no, two days ago, my wife Spent seven hours in line waiting on the fucking Disney website to get our kids and us Disneyland tickets and Disneyland hotel uh, reservations on stuff. And her page like got deleted or whatever. So seven fucking hours. She was livid. She was fucking furious. So I made a little call and uh, they sold out fast, really fast, whatever. I made a call, was able to get like a random day. So I'm gonna have the kids play, you know, hooky that day and everything. And but we're hype, we're super hyped because now Kaya can walk around. She can kind of see the rides and all this other stuff and go check out Cars Land and everything else. But yo, my wife is a real one for that shit. She's super down for the family. You know what I'm saying? So yes, we are headed to Disneyland. That's the Yang Gang. Oh yeah, yesterday. Yesterday I hit a nine hole par three golf course by my mom's house. And I also hit a hundred. 20 balls at the range. Bad idea. Should have hit 60. Should even hit less than that, okay? And let me tell you, I'd rather have got into a fight with three grown-ass men who know how to fight and shot the 1D than feel the way I feel right now. My forearms hurt. My back hurts. My feet hurt. My whole body is in fucking pain, okay? And after not hitting any golf balls for almost 20 years, look, my swing is absolutely trash it is atrocious okay and all my form is off so i'm gonna definitely need some lessons from a pro there's this legit korean pro who trains a lot of celebrities whatever else he reached out to me and offered to train me i'm like fucking sad i lost his account if anybody knows who that is whatever if maybe he's talked about it so i don't know um my cousin jay my cousin peter pros but they're an oc and shit i don't know man definitely i might have to hit a pete no fuck that pga is my dog man pga is his nickname because the motherfucker was going pro and decided to get into cannabis. I don't fucking want to smack him up. But yo, listen, I loved hitting every bit of those balls, man. That fucking, those tailor-made clubs are fucking unbelievable. And at the range, you know, the farthest wall is 230. I hit the wall twice. You know, at 120 balls, I think I fucking, I might've shanked like 10 or 12 of them, which is not bad, but they didn't feel good. I used seven different clubs. I need to, you know, fuck with the pitchers, some irons, all that stuff. I can't wait to really get back in the swing of things, right? And really get back to playing golf. You know, hopefully 18 holes, all that shit, right? Can't wait to play with my cousin Steve and like really make this my thing, okay? For those of you who don't know, this is actually a dream of mine, all right? Like for real. It's a real life goal to become semi-good at golf and do this until I am like off this earth, okay? So um, if you guys know any pros, let me know. Send a suggestion, but I need... Definitely need an Epsom salt bath, you know, like ASAP and a full deep body massage like later today. But uh, right about now, your boy is headed back to see my man, Dr. Wahab of Unforgettable Smile. Um, I got oral surgery, got to install that new veneer that broke. So uh, listen, guys, catch me on the weekend wrap up and we got some dope guests coming on the show. We got legend Edison Chen who's like the Leonardo DiCaprio of China. We got my man, hip hop pioneer, Big Daddy Kane on the show. And listen, guys, thank you all to the new and the old listeners. Of course, the BTB Army, we are truly at our peak and we are crushing these downloads right now and we are crushing the charts. So I'm very grateful for you all. Now, there is a second official PML Quick Strike coming May 1st. So go to the PML Quick Strike IG page and for more details for the address of where it is in downtown LA, this one we drive 
to Walnut, to Hingwa Lee. It's a Rolex dealership. They got APs, all kinds of shit and everything. It's going to be fucking lit. The drive is going to be nice. Make sure you come in an exotic, something fast, something legit. You know what I'm saying? That's how we roll. And uh, it's for Asian hate and all the other stuff with AAPI. But look, you know I'm coming in heavy as fuck, all right? And right before we leave, I just wanted to say this real quick. It's just like a little bit, you know, you know, I leave these little gems and shit, right? You know, obviously this is not your practice life. But look, ever since I was able to bust a nut, okay, maybe even before that, I always wanted to win, no matter what the cost, okay? If that meant eating a good meal was winning, cool. Winning a softball game, winning a basketball game, crushing a DJ set. As a DJ, right? Winning a, a fucking, you know, a college basketball game, a pickup game on the street, whatever the f- in any capacity, okay? Building a great, like, actual business team around me, you know, my financial advisors, my legal team. I have never given a single fuck what color their skin was, okay? All I wanted to do was win. And so I suggest you try to live by the same creed. All right, select who's best for the job. If you happen to have 17 Asians working for you and then four black people and two Hispanics and two white people working for you, so be it. As long as you did your due diligence and the best man won fair and square. That's all anyone could ask, all right? But I just want you guys to know that I never cared about any of that shit when it came to skin color. If I fuck with you, I fuck with you. All right, we could all joke, do everything else. I'm not into all that weirdo shit. Okay, we all bleed the same color. All of our shit stinks. All right, select who works the best with you. All right, in any capacity, when working with any color, be weary of people's struggles. All right, just try to be fair in a world that already isn't fair. If you do your part, and we all do our part, then this world becomes a better place. Because right about now, I'm really seeing the media trying to push Asians against blacks, blacks against Asians. I'm not trying to have that shit. I love black people. You already know what it is, right? Listen, I love you guys. Thank you again for listening. God bless. And yo, that's it. We're out of here, man. Yo, Lakey Lake, take us home, homie. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.